Welcome back to the third episode. In this lesson, we will actually build the whole environment and create our own world. We will replace all the boring cubes with high quality building assets. And in the end, we're even gonna create the foreground from scratch. First, let's prepare our assets. For that, we're gonna use some free buildings from Kitbash 3D. But I want to encourage you that if you already own building assets, or if you want to download your own, for example, Max Hay has a really cool free package of buildings, feel free to do that because it doesn't matter what kind of buildings you use. And I think it's awesome if every animation looks a bit different in the end. Also, just a quick disclaimer, the Kitbash assets can take some computer resources. So if you have an old PC or laptop, you could run into difficulties later. In that case, I would also suggest to you to use your own building assets that maybe take up a little bit less computer resources or look online for some buildings with a lower poly count. But don't worry, if you have any gaming PC or even laptop from the last five years or probably even more, I'm not really sure because I haven't actually tested it, but I think it should be good. If you realize it later in the course that your PC can't handle it, you can always replace the assets, so that's no problem. So now you can import your buildings. If you want to use the free buildings from Kitbash, like I do, let's first download Cargo from Kitbash to unlock all the free buildings. Let's install the software and the plugin. I have the link in the description. And for that, double click the downloaded file and click through the initial process. Then register or login into Cargo. Now, if we go to models and then filter for free, we have some amazing free assets. Let's just download a bunch of them. I suggest that you switch to 1K textures because we are not gonna notice the difference anyway because the buildings are in the background and we can spare some graphic card resources we're gonna need later. Now we can just click on import and we have the building in our scene. Let's put it into our new collection and let's just import the other buildings real quick. Once we have all the building in our scene, let's rename our initial city collection with all the blocks and rename it to blockout collection and then move all the buildings we just imported into a new city collection by pressing the key M and create a new collection. Now with everything in Blender, we can start moving them in place and rotating them around. So the goal is to kind of match it with the cubes because for that we already like we created the composition with the cube but of course like not all our buildings will fit exactly but that's not a problem by the way if you use the git bash buildings make sure to use the empty around because otherwise it can get screwed up later we can also duplicate our assets but i suggest to use alt d instead of shift d because then it will create an instance of the building and it's just way better to optimize our scene but keep in mind, if you create an instance and then move the original of the instance, it also moves because it's linked. So yes, just keep that in mind. Or if two buildings move at a time, that's probably the reason. Let's fill up our scene until it looks right. I also turn the blockout collection on and off and see how it looks and how it compares to our initial composition. If something isn't visible anymore, make sure to set the clip end on the camera to something like 10,000 meter and also in the viewport because Blender clips everything beyond 1000 meter by default. This probably takes you a little bit longer than we just discussed now in this episode, but just take your time until you feel the world works for you. You can see I also duplicated some of the larger buildings and rotated them. So I just can fill out everything and there is no blank spaces where you can see through the whole city. And yes, now let's choose a cool HDRI from Polyhaven. And I like to use the HDRI add-ons to import them because then you can easily switch between them until you like it. I attach the download link to this add-on and you can install it like a normal add-on. And once you install the add-on, download some HDRIs you like and then move them to a specific location. I created like an asset folder where I have an HDRI folder and I store all my HDRIs there. Now we have the zip file of the add-on in our downloads folder and we have the HDRIs in a specific HDRIs folder we just created. Now let's also move the zip file somewhere safe. I also have an add-on folder for that, but that's really up to you. And then go to 
Blender and go to Preferences and then under Add-ons, click on Install and select the zip file and install it. Now we just have to activate the add-on with this checkbox and you're done. Let's go to the Easy HRI add-on, which you should see here on the side. And let's select the folder where you saved your HDRIs. Now we just have to click on Create World Nodes and it created our HDRI setup. Now we can choose an HDRI we like and I will go with this one for now. And again, feel free to use a different one if you like another one better because it just gives you a unique animation in the end. And you also don't have to be 100% sure because we will probably gonna replace it later when we add all the details. Now we want to view it and see how it looks. But first, let's check our viewport render settings. If you use my startup file, you should have the same values and we should be fine. Let's make sure to save our file first and then go into render mode. This will probably take a while, especially the first time. Here, you can run into two problems. The first can be that everything works, but Blender crashes while changing things in the rendering mode. If that happens, just open it up again and try to change things in solid view and then check in the render view and change back to solid view to change more. The second problem you can have is that you ran out of GPU memory. For example, my GPU had some problems because I was also recording this video or this screen recording. So let's try to optimize our scene. Running out of VRAM is probably the first problem you will run into if you create complex scenes. And I always struggle with that. And no matter how much VRAM you have, you will always run into this problem because yes, yeah, just something we have to be cautious. So to optimize it, first of all, let's close any other program on your PC that is unnecessarily taking your computer resources. By the way, you can show how much resource a Blender scene takes by going into the preferences and under interface, under the status bar, select the video and system memory checkbox. And if you want to see how many vertices you have in the scene, select scene statistics. Now you can see it in the bottom right corner. The scene right now should also take up to nine gigabyte VRAM. But in case you only have an eight gigabyte VRAM card or lower, let's try to optimize it even more. Let's delete all the buildings you can see and rearrange them so it makes sense. With that, we reduce the amount of geometry and we also already have 1K textures if you use the cargo assets. So we can't make that smaller without doing every texture manually, which would take hours. So no, <laughs> of course, you can make your city smaller and delete even more buildings. But I also don't want to do that because then I have to change my whole scene. So the last thing, and I do most of the time, is just switch your rendering device to CPU right here in the render settings. This will take a bit longer to render, but at least you can display it and it should work fine for most of the scenes. Also, for most things like the HRI, we can also use the material preview mode. Just wait until all the shaders are compiled and then select scene light and scene world. Or another method just to view our HDRI in cycles is to just deactivate the city collection real quick and maybe activate the block out collection. Now go into render mode again and it should work pretty easy. Of course, you can't see all the buildings, but it's good enough to set up the HDRI. We can now change the HDRI easily with the HDRI add-on. We can rotate it to change from where the sun comes and we can also tint it or change the color or adjust the strength. For now, we will only play around with the rotation until I like it. You can see that our shot can look very different by just rotating the HDRI. We will probably also change it later in the course, so let's leave it like this, even if we're not completely satisfied yet. Let's move on. Next, we want to adjust the materials for the city and fine tune the look. For example, I don't like this red vibrant material and it doesn't fit with the mood board colors. So let's go into the shading tab. Now just select the building and let's find the red material. Once you found it, we can add a U saturation node in between the image texture and the base color. Let's turn the saturation a little bit down. Let's do the same process to all the other colors we don't like. And this is really up to personal preferences. I also recommend to use the material preview mode for this with Eevee because it's just way faster. As we already discussed in the first episode, it helps to establish a color palette in your reference board and stick with that. For the next part, we will turn our attention to the foreground and create it and even do some modeling. 
For that, let's go back to the layout space and hide the city and the foreground collection. Then let's add in a plane, go into edit mode and the top view, and let's scale it on the Y axis. Then press the I key on the keyboard and slide it a bit inwards. With the inside face selected, let's extrude it upwards with the key E a little bit. Then press I again and move it in just a tiny bit and extrude also a tiny bit down again. So we can cr like create this bevel. What we're doing now is just create one window of this building we want to have on top. Now let's extrude the bottom edges and then select the new face and extrude it upwards too. Now we have created our basic window. Let's go to the modifier tabs and add an array modifier with a count of 20 and duplicate it. On the modifier we just duplicated, let's change the X factor to zero and the Y factor to one. Now we have this whole skyscraper looking window front. Let's change the original a bit in the editing mode so it has a little bit less space in between. Perfect. Now let's add it to the foreground collection and let's rotate the window front so that it looks downwards. And let's move it in place and hide the block out. The next step is to texture it. For that, go to the shading space and let's create two new materials. Let's call the top one glass and the bottom one steel. In the glass material in the principal BSDF node, let's turn the roughness to zero and the transmission to one. On the steel texture, let's turn the metallic to one and change the color to dark gray. Okay, so now only the glass material is applied and the bottom material like the steel material doesn't do anything. So to apply the different materials to different faces, so let's go into editing mode and select all the faces with the A key and on the steel material, click assign. Then only select the middle big face where we want to apply the glass material and click assign. It should then look like this. Let's fine tune the glass material. Let's make it darker and make it 25% transparent with the alpha slider set to 0 0.75. And next we want to add some imperfections. For that, we use some free surface imperfection textures from Action VFX. You can also find the download link attached to this video. So let's use this texture right here. You can just drag it into the shading space and then plug the image texture into the roughness and add a color ramp in between. Go to the top view and in edit mode with only the middle face selected with F3, search for project from view and press enter. Now in the UV editor at the top left, select the texture we just imported. While still in edit mode with the face selected, you should see it on the texture. Rotate it and scale it until it fits the window. And now we have some beautiful imperfections. You can adjust them with the color ramp and make them stronger or less strong by adjusting the color of the white slider. By the way, if you also want the glass to look good in the material preview or use the material preview for adjusting the glass, now it looks weird. So in your render engine, switch to Eevee real quick and select screen space reflection and also activate refraction and then go to the material itself and activate screen space refraction and put a blend mode to alpha blend. Then switch back to cycles. Now we change the material preview settings. Let's switch back to the layout workspace and duplicate the glass wall and rotate it to create like a corner of a building. Then let's add in a new plane, scale and rotate it that it looks like the building floor. Apply rotation and scale and then add an array modifier with a constant offset of minus 3.87 meters. So it exactly fits the floors of the building, of like the glass spacing. In the end, it should look like this. Go back into the shading tab and give it a gray material. So now if you take another look at the glass, it is a little bit too much see-through and you want some more reflection. So let's turn metallic to one and alpha to 0 0.9 and the color to a normal gray. Let's also bring the city back for better reference for the reflections and everything. Okay, I'm pretty pleased with that look. The only thing I want to change is to lower the alpha again to 0 0.85, but besides that, I think it looks good. After a quick check of the reflections, you can see the HDRI below the city right here. So let's add a quick floor because that isn't realistic. We can just copy the floor from this building and move it in place, and here we go. I'm pretty pleased with this look and we went from just a few blocks to an actual city and a floating skyscraper in the foreground. 
In the next episode, we will add the character and also start on the animation. This includes like the whole glass breaking and everything. In this episode, we already made some big progress and the next one is also going to be a cool one. So yes, definitely come back for that and see you there in the fourth episode.